Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology Crack. Today we're gonna to be looking at this kidney model and we'll use this to identify blood flow through the kidney as well as some basic anatomical structures. We're gonna start with the outside renal capsule, this connective tissue layer that's going to surround the cortex and the medulla to form the actual shape of the kidney, where it invaginates in to allow for the ureter, blood vessel, nerves, and lymphatics to enter is gonna be called our hilum. As far as basic general anatomy, the outer structure, the outer layer of tissue within the kidney is gonna be called the cortex. All the pyramids make up the medulla. The cortex is gonna extend in between the pyramid, forming these renal columns. Now, now that we have general basic anatomy down, before we get into too many specifics, I do wanna cover blood flow through the kidney. We start right here. This is going to be our major blood supply, our major artery coming into the kidney. This is known as our renal artery. As we enter through the hilum and start branching over the pelvis and some of the major minor calyces, we have our segmental artery. We will then extend in between the pyramids through the renal column. This is our interlobar artery. We're gonna branch and spread across the base of the pyramid. So the red will be our arcuate artery. And then we're gonna extend and radiate into the cortex. Now, this is where arteries can get a little bit confusing. Uh, our lab books and most lab books will call this an interlobular artery. Uh, I think that this tends to confuse a lot of students because we have interlobular and interlobar right here. So I prefer to call this artery the cortical radiate artery. Uh, it gives a better idea of where it, what it does and where it is cortical radiate extending radiating into the cortex and it will alleviate any confusion with the interlobar artery. Now from the cortical radiate we will then we could go over to this model or this portion of the model to see that we're going to enter into uh, the Bowman's capsule into glomerulus via the afferent arterial. We'll work our magic in here filtering the blood filtering out that plasma leaving via the efferent arterial. From those efferent arterioles, we're going to hit our peritubular capillaries and our cortical nephrons. We will extend down into our vasa recta in our um, juxtamedullary nephrons. And then we're gonna come back via pretty much uh, venous flow. So we hit our venous capillaries and then we come right into this structure which just reverses the arterial uh, structure. So we have, so instead of cortical radiate artery, we have cortical radiate vein. We come back to the arcuate vein. So if we come over here, here's our cortical radiate vein, arcuate vein. We'll hit our interlobar vein. Notice there is no segmental vein. It goes directly into the renal vein. So again, if we start at the end of the capillary system, we come cortical radiate vein, arcuate vein, We'll do our interlobar vein right to our renal vein. And that's pretty much gonna be our blood flow through the entire kidney. Now, if you look at some minute details of the structure, if you look at the apex of the pyramid, this is going to be our renal papilla. This is where all the collecting ducts are going to kind of aggregate to slowly drip that concentrated or dilute urine, depending on the conditions of the body, into the first of our three funnels. So we go from small funnel to bigger funnel to the biggest funnel. At each apex of a pyramid is a minor calyx. So this is our first funnel. Then we meet, so minor calyx, minor calyx, will meet to form a major calyx. So major calyx is our second larger funnel. Those major calyces will join to merge and form the renal pelvis. So it's this last internal space over here before all that urine will travel down the ureter and into the bladder for storage. That's the general anatomy of this big entire kidney as a whole, at least covered for what our class pertains. We are now going to look right here. This is zooming in to pretty much the nephron, the functional unit of this kidney. We're gonna zoom in right here, and we're gonna do some basic general anatomy. We'll look at two different types of nephrons. So we look at this nephron right here. This is a cortical nephron. Remember about 85% of our nephrons are cortical. So reabsorption and secretion of key nutrients and substances here. So the majority of the nephron lies in the cortex. And again, that line to help us delineate the cortex from the medulla is gonna be these arcuate arteries and veins, right? So everything above will be cortex, everything below will be medulla. We look at this nephron. This nephron's really, really long. So that loop of Henle is really, really long and extends deep into the medulla. So these are gonna be our juxtamedullary nephrons. 
these purple balls that we see are all renal corpuscles. So remember, about 1.5 million renal corpuscles per kidney. So we have a ton of these, and we see these little red balls right here are another representation of those renal corpuscles. These kind of magnify them so that we can see the actual structures. So let's look at the loops in the limbs and see exactly what this nephron is. We'll get into the renal corpuscle in a little more detail when we look at this structure right here. This is it magnified. We start with our first squiggly tubule. This is our uh, proximal convoluted tubule. Proximal meaning closest to this pole, closest to that renal corpuscle. We drop down to our descending limb in the loop of Henle. We come up our ascending limb, and then we hit our next squiggly tubule, which would be our distal convoluted tubule. Now, a key thing to note, if we look at this model, we show this in a linear fashion, so proximal convoluted, descending, ascending, distal convoluted, then into the collecting duct, when in the actual anatomical structure, the proximal and distal actually crossed over each other so that the distal convoluted can come back around and move between the afer and efer and arterial forming that uh, JGA or the juxtaglomerular apparatus which will monitor and regulate blood pressure uh, of, uh, of the blood going into this fenestrated capillary into this glomerulus, okay? Now, from the distal convoluted tubule, we enter into the collecting duct. Once we get into the papillary region, we have our papillary region of our collecting duct, and our urine will be fine-tuned, will be adjusted, and will either, again, depending on the condition of the body, be dilute or concentrated, and will drip into the minor calyx over here. So that's our general anatomy as we come on into our nephron, our functional unit. Let's look at our renal corpuscle in depth so we can understand what's going on here. If we look at our renal corpuscle. We're going to break it down into two basic components. The first being Bowman's capsule, right? And Bowman's capsule is the outermost parietal layer of this structure. The visceral layer is going to be fused down onto this fenestrated capillary. We're going to see modified cells called podocytes. Those podocytes are going to have these foot-like projections called pedicels, and this is going to help accentuate uh, the filtration of the blood moving through this through this capillary network. The capsular space is gonna be the space essentially between the simple squamous parietal layer of Bowman's capsule to the uh, visceral layer that's fused down onto the actual glomerulus. And then this portion of the tube that's leading out is going to be our proximal convoluted tubule. You can see the distal convoluted tubule coming back between the afer and efren arterial forming that juxta glomerular apparatus. So that is our kidney model. I hope it helps you with your study efforts. Good luck and thank you for watching.